I'm just excited to see us do our job, do it full speed, you know, with red line and detail and discipline. Um, I think they're excited to play, and I think that, uh, you know, all, we've had a really good week of practice. And Coach Keenan and the staff has really been pushing that hard. We've got a great, had a great look from our scout team, and they're excited to go. As far as the, the penalties go, what was the, some of the things that you talked about with the guys? You know, just talked about, you know, how damaging uh, kind of those self-inflicted wounds are. and. You know, understanding that everybody on the field from the head coach to the trainer and everybody in between has a responsibility and no one's worth 15 yards. Nobody. Michael and Jason, um, even the best um, offensive line prospects often don't play as true freshmen because there's so much development required at that position. Matthew Lotto came in this last game and played a bunch of snaps after you had an injury. What has he shown you uh, to put himself in that position, and what are the challenges that an incoming offensive lineman faces to play as a true freshman? Yeah, he's, he's a really neat young man. Um, obviously, he's got a long way to go. He's really grown a lot in, you know, in that body kind of in the last seven months. Um, so that part of it is like part of his devel developmental process. Uh, every freshman wants to play. I think you know, the, the hard part is that there's just a developmental process to getting good at college football. And uh, so, Sometimes when a freshman has to play early, it, it accelerates that development, but there's some tough lessons in there. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that uh, we're going to do everything we can to bring him along the right way. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's going to be some tough moments for him. It's just the nature of it. You're going against guys that are four or five years older than you and guys that have been playing for you know, at least that long and, you know, have more experience on this level. Jason and Brian. You had mentioned after the game uh, the amount of tackling you did throughout camp. Now that the season has started, what's your approach there, especially after a game where maybe you miss more tackles than you would have liked to see? Well, a lot of that has to be with like guys doing their job and being in a position to make a play, you know. And so I think some of that, in, in, in not just being where they're supposed to be in terms of schematically, but being where, kind of where they're supposed to be in terms of their body posture, and whether that's bent knees or you know under control when they get to the point of attack, mm -hmm. uh, not just flying by and you know, stuff like that. So you try and do a lot of that in practice and, and give yourself a chance to you know, work on angles and kind of, you know, form tackling and the proper way to tackle and the proper position to be in. Uh, but it's, it's definitely something that's hard to simulate, you know, and, and I think coaches across America are having this conversation every single off season, in season, uh, because the, you know, you, you try and prep, you're trying to create the most safe practice environment you can, but also get kind of the required physical work you need to get done. And it's a challenge. And then as a coach, when you watch film, is there, I don't want to say is it a better feeling, but I guess is it, is it a better feeling when you see stuff, you go, okay, we can, we can fix that as opposed to it's a talent issue or something like that? Sure. Sure. We always want to operate in the space where we control, you know, what do we control? If it's something technically or schematically that we can control, it's always way better than someone like, yeah. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes you're playing against a player who's just better than you, right? And then you got to do, then you got to do a good job with getting population of football or having a good, you know, idea on how you want to play that person. You know, schematically, you have to try and offset it. Brian? Uh, in regards to the wanting to spread the ball around, uh, throwing it, but maybe in other areas as well, how do you avoid having anyone involved in that maybe overcompensate for what was or wasn't done the previous game? Since I, I don't think we look at it that way at all, right? Just like the progression is a progression and in most progressions, you're going to have a primary, and then you're going to have a secondary. You know, it just kind of breaks down that way. So, excuse me. So for you know, for Noah or whoever's you know playing like that part of it, um, just let Noah play. You know, I think I just think you can overstructure that. Sorry, mm -hmm. I, I just think you can like you can it can be detrimental, right? So, so it wouldn't like, be a just case. Play, just play. Yeah, it wouldn't know? be a case where you're like, let's try to have these guys be more the first read to try to get them the ball more. You you want to not make a, a major change like that? No. Okay. Justin and then Michael. Uh, just what have you seen out of NAU on film? It's hard, you, only, you know, you have one game and it's a new staff and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, in some ways they're probably saying some similar stuff about us, um, except that, you know, defensively we're like we were a year ago, so. Um, but I think, you know, we got to spend some, a chance to spend some time with this coaching staff. We, they had a camp this summer and we went down there and worked it as a staff. It's a really good group of guys. They're really, really sharp. I think they have good players, and I think anytime you play one of these games, 
it's, it's, it's always complicated. You know what I mean? Because um, for, the, for their roster and their team, it's obviously a really, really big game. And for our roster and our team, it's a big game, but it doesn't feel the same as, as a Big 12 game. You know what I mean? So I think that's just me being honest. And so making sure our players understand the importance of that because every team you line up against now in college football can beat you. It doesn't matter. It's every single team you line up against every single week. And I've been in those situations where when I was at San Jose State, we lost to a good UC Davis team. And it was really, it was, it was tough and they beat us. They outplayed us, you know what I mean? So I really think this is about us, how we approach it, how we attack it. I think we've had a great week of practice and now it's about lining it up and playing the game. Now, what do you think about the turnover sword? The what? The, the turnover sword that you guys I think have. it's cool. I think it's cool. I think it's a cool tradition that they, it's been here for a little while and I think it's, it's awesome. Michael and Troy. That, that jumbo package that you guys used, is that something that you used at San Jose State? Or was that something that someone- Similar, here? yeah, similar, similar, yeah. Does it have a name? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm, I love him for you. Um, the game was really long this last week. I don't know if you felt that. Yeah. There were a lot of stoppages and replay. Do you have any idea why, like, went that way and there's certain things that maybe could be but, you know, yeah, yeah, I think I think first when you know whenever you play on big networks you're gonna there be times where you have four timeouts a quarter and so that's gonna always impact the length of the game and then I think you know last week there was a lot of reviews and so those reviews take time so it's nothing more than that you know it's it doesn't really matter to us like we got to play from start to finish so <laughs> you know uh, uh, but I know I know it was long, and I know the games didn't start late. But I appreciated how the crowd showed up. I appreciated how they stayed and rallied, and the zone of zoo was awesome, and our fans were awesome. And, and I think that's one of those things I've been talking about all off season is that you know in this new conference we're going into, the every stadium is going to be full, like 100% of the time. You know what I mean? And and we need to create that same environment here in Arizona Stadium. So when when our opponents when NAU shows up here on Saturday night or when our opponents show up here down the road, they have to feel what that feels like. Troy and then Justin. You kind of mentioned it in terms of, you know, it's a big game, it's not a big 12 game, but it's still a big game and having that mindset. How have you seen the upper classroom, the leadership in the locker room kind of take that message and give it out to the freshmen? And well, the they've been great about it. haven't been through this type They've of been great about because 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 they lost to these guys three years ago. So they know what that feels like. You know what I mean? So our upperclassmen have been fantastic that way. And I think that's really, you know, they have to be. Like the, the senior leadership of your team are the ones that have to make sure that the players, the team is in alignment with our culture and how we attack our process. And so those guys have been awesome. Justin, then Brian. Uh, what do you like about Genesis Smith as a defensive back? And how beneficial is it to have guys like Dalton and Gunnar kind of mentor him in his first couple years? Oh, it's awesome. Uh, Genesis is one of just, the most fun guys on this football team. He just has this incredible energy, the big smile. I hope you guys have gotten to talk to him a little bit, but he's just a super engaging young man. His parents are amazing. He's got a bunch of siblings. They're just like the happiest family on the planet. Um, but having, having guys like Gunnar and Dalton, Stukes, those guys around him is incredibly valuable. Right? All those guys are really good players. They've all played a ton of football. You know, them being kind of in that big brother mode is extremely valuable for his process and his development. And I think we're, we're all expecting big things from Genesis as, as his, his career continues here. Last question to Brian. With there, you having a shorter week next week, if this game gets to a point where you feel like the outcome is not in doubt, will you be quicker to, to sub out the starters so that because they have uh, less time to recover? It's funny. <laughs> I don't even think that way. No. I mean, that, I guess that, that would make sense, but like, like we need to win the game. And in the final ledger, they all count the same. I, kn I know they don't count the same to, you know, the fan base or the, the university, you know, but, but in terms of the final ledger and wins and losses, that, every game we play counts the same. And so we just need to win a freaking game. And that's all that matters. All right.